fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! I'll silver! Away! The overland stage came pounding across the flats that stretched from the foot of Thunder Mountain to the small settlement of Buena Vista. Johnny Murdoch, the driver, was exchanging opinions with the guard, who, from force of habit, watched both sides of the trail as a swaying concord neared the town. Lige Thomas, sole occupant of the stagecoach, sat up and regarded the familiar countryside with new and eager interest. Up front, the guard shifted his sawed-off shotgun to a more comfortable position and said, The kid's plumb foolish. If he wants to make a fresh start, why'd he go somewhere where nobody knows him? Well, at least you got to admire his courage. You know, if it was me, just finished five years in territorial prison, you're if I'd want to come back and face the crowd that sent me there. Mm. Remember when they took Lige away? He swore then he'd come back and prove his innocence. Ah, that was just kid talk. Yeah, well, he came back, didn't sure. he? Wait till you see the reception he gets. Oh, ho there, ho. Steady, boy. Well, look at that crowd by the hotel. I bet you they all know that Lige Thomas is on this stage. Looks like the whole town's on hand. Ho there, ho. All except the one Lige would want to see most, that Andrews girl, Molly. Yeah. Ho there, ho, ho, ho. Uh, ho there, ho. Uh, hand me down that suitcase there. Well, Lige, here you are in the old hometown. <laughs> Hasn't changed much in looks, has it, Mr. Murdoch? Here's your suitcase, Lige. Well, thanks. And uh, look, kid. Yeah? Now, I ain't honing to stick my nose in your business, but the stage will be leaving in three hours if you decide to move on. Well, yeah. Thanks, I'll remember. See you later, kid. And good luck. <laughs> I'll need it, I guess. That's him. Looks kind of pale, doesn't he? It looks like an old man. What do you suppose he wants to come back here for? I'd like to get a room for a couple of days. Sorry. All filled up. Filled up? Why, this hotel hasn't been filled up since the gold rush. It's full now. Uh, hey, Bart, fix me up a room, will you? Oh, sure, Marty. Here you are. 223. Upstairs to the left. Thanks. So, uh, you're all filled up. That's right. You know, it's a funny thing. <laughs> funny how many little tricks a fella can pick up in five years. Like this one. Hey, let go of my arm. Sure, friend, as soon as you tell me who you're taking orders from around here. Don't take orders from no one. Who told you not to get me a room? Nobody told me. 
Take it easy, you're breaking my arm. Uh-huh, that's the general idea. Now, who? It was Mr. Bader. Well, well, Carl Brader, huh? Yeah. Banker, solid citizen, and prominent polecat. Let go. Let go, my yeah, arm. Yeah, just one more thing. What room do I get? Anyone. There's lots of rooms upstairs. Thanks, friend. <laughs> that's right hospitable of you. Thanks ever so much. All I gotta say is that jailbird better keep out of my way. There ain't room enough in this room, but town for him and me both. I don't know who you are, mister. But I'm willing to agree with that last remark you made. What do you mean by that, Thomas? You were just saying that there ain't room enough in this town for you and me both. I reckon maybe you better leave. Because I'm figuring on staying for a spell. Yeah? Somebody might change your mind. That somebody won't be you, hombre. Now get out. I'm losing my appetite just looking at you. Well, you only little... Go right ahead, my friend. Help yourself. The boys here will help you pick up your teeth. <laughs> I'll see you again, jailbird. <laughs> Say, you just tamed a curly wolf for sure. Well, howdy, Slim. Just who was that curly wolf? Bat Gillis. He owns the Flying W now. Yeah. The Flying W. I heard about Dad losing the place. It might be a good idea if you was to grow a pair of eyes in the back of your noggin. You might need them with Gillis on the prod. Thanks, Slim. I'll remember. Oh. Hello, Lige. Oh. Thanks, Molly. It's the first hello I've heard since I got back. I, I'm awfully glad to see you. Thanks again. Now I know I'm staying. That's great, Lige, but please be careful, will you? Careful? Of what? Of who? I don't know, but there's something, something wrong around oh, here. Not anymore, Molly. Everything's going to be all right from here on out. Well, Lige, you don't waste much time, do you? Oh, oh hello, Sheriff. How do you mean? I mean you're a fast worker, Lige. <laughs> Now, look here, Sheriff. I reckon you know that Molly and I were fixing to be married just before I went away. Now, just... I be... wasn't referring to you and Molly. I'm talking about you and Carl Brady. Me and... What about me and Carl Brady? You're a pretty cool customer, lad. It's them five years in prison. Answer me. What about Carl Brady? Hey, what are you pulling that gun for? Better come along, lad. I don't want no trouble. Lige. Now, wait a minute. I ain't moving till you answer my question. What about Brader? I just found him in his office with a bullet in his heart. And what? Uh... Well, you're not getting me for that. Are you? Lige, don't. Lige. Oh, Lige. Now, listen, Molly. I don't know what this is all about, but it smells like the same rotten play they cooked up five years ago. I believed in justice then and took my chance on a square deal. This time, I'm going to fight back. Oh, no. No. Oh. Oh. Get up there. Get up, boy. Early that evening at a secluded camp high up on the Lost Hills, the Lone Ranger and Dan Reed, together with their stalwart friend, Tonto, were gathered around the campfire. The masked rider of the plains had just told Dan that he had a surprise for him. Golly, I, I can't imagine what it would be. Here it is, then. A little present from Tonto and myself. What? Oh, boy. A real rawhide lariat. A Tonto cut and cured the thongs of leather, and I helped him to braid it. If you take good care of that lariat, it will last you for years. Oh, gosh, I... Gee whiz, thanks, sir. Thanks, Tonto. You're welcome, Dan. Ah, you rub good with the bare fat. Make it soft. That's right, and especially after it gets wet. Stretch it out and do as Tonto said. Rub it thoroughly with bear grease. He must have it. What is it, Tonto? Do not move over by big tree, man, hide in the brush. You see, Dan, the bear grease makes your lariat soft and pliable. Understand? Yes, sir. You see him? Him hide and watch our camp. Yes, Tonto. I see him now. Taking care of this lariat is 
Well, just like taking care of a gun. Here. Now, when you carry a gun, you must always be sure that it's properly loaded and always well-oiled. Because you never know when you might need it. Like this. All right. Come out of there with your hands up in the air. Gee, was that fellow there all this time? Tonto just saw him a moment ago. Tonto, get his gun. I smashed his rifle. Um, he got him. Well, young fellow, looks like you've got some explaining to do. I'm lying back there watching you. I wasn't going to shoot. Why were you watching? Because, well, I wasn't able to make up my mind. About what? As to whether I really wanted to join you or not. Join? Well, go on. When I saw you wearing a mask, I knew that you must be on the dodge. And, well, I sort of have to ride the back trails, too. Oh, is that so? Yeah. You see them lights down there in the valley? Yeah. Born and raised there. That's my home. About as welcome down there as the measles. How so? Because I got blamed for a crime I never did, that's why. Got sent to prison for five years. Tried to take it like a man. Just got back here today and wasn't in town two hours until the sheriff came after me on a murder charge. Murder? Carl Brader. As far as I'm concerned, he deserved it. But that don't mean I killed him. Did you? No, of course I didn't. No more than I held up that stagecoach five years ago. As long as they won't let me live a straight life, I might as well learn how to live a crooked one. Well, what about your family? Isn't there anyone you care about uh, in the valley? Yes, there's someone I care about. After what happened this afternoon, I doubt if she cares much about me. Your girl? My girl, Molly. Guess the only friend I've got in the world. I have no family. Mom died when I was pretty young. And Dad passed away a few months after I went to prison. Guess the shame was more than he could bear. Now, listen, mister, I'm tired talking about me. Can I join up with you? Yes, you can join us. On one condition. All right. I don't care. What is it? If you ride with me, you'll have to take orders from me. You'll have to do exactly as I say. Well, sure, I expected that. <laughs> Even a bunch of outlaws have to have a leader, I guess. Only let's get one thing straight. Yes. I ain't joining up because I get any use for you or your kind. It's just that well, a man can stand just so much and no more. I'd almost rather blow my brains out than start on the Alhu Trail. I've never done a crooked thing in my life, you understand? Yes, I think I do. And I wouldn't do this now. It was only someone, somewhere that I could talk to. Someone who would believe me. I believe you, Lodge. And uh, I'd like to help you. Yeah? <laughs> That's rich. All the people I know, the only one who believes my story is a masked outlaw. Hiding in the hills. You're wrong about us being outlaws, Lyons. But that... Now, look. Here. You know what this means? Bullet. Silver bullet. What? You call this Indian Tarno. Holy jumping Jupiter, mister... You trying to tell me that you're the Lone Ranger? Yes. Well, I'll be... No, it just ain't possible. I want you to write a message to Molly. Tell her not to worry. You found some friends who will help you to prove your innocence. Then you can tell me your whole story from start to finish. Will you do that? I sure will. just about everything that ever happened to me, I guess. All right, Lodge. Now I think we're ready to ride. Oh, here's that note from Molly. I give it to Dan. He can deliver it to her in the morning. Well, everybody ready? Steady, uh, yeah. Are you ready? Ready to ride, Lodge? Ready. I've been waiting for this chance for five years. And let's go. Get him up. Get him on. Come on, Victor. Oh, Silver. Boy. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger heard the story of Lige Thomas's life and believed that the boy was really innocent. Immediately, the mask rider decided to help Lige clear his name and sent Dan riding to town with a message from Lige to the girl, Molly. I was desperate, Molly. But now that the Lone Ranger and his friends have promised to help me, I'm going to fight until I can prove my innocence. Oh, I'm so glad. What's your name? Dan Reed. Oh, Dan, you, you can't know how much this means to Lige and me. I've always believed in him. Yes, I know, Molly. And that's what gave him strength enough to believe in himself. All those years Lige was away, I I kept praying that someday he would come back and... Dan, be careful what you say in front of this man. He... Hello, Molly. That was my best girl today. What would you like, Mr. Gillis? <laughs> well, now, I'd like to get a little better acquainted with you. Seeing as your boyfriend is uh, left for parts unknown. Did you come over to talk about Lige? Uh, yeah, Molly, uh... The word ain't out yet, but seems like Lige come back last night and carted off a few souvenirs of the old hometown. Lige came back here? Yeah. Now he really is on the dodge, seeing as how he busted into the bank last what? night. What? Sure. He snuck back into town sometime early this morning. Broke into Carl Brader's private safe. I guess he uh, needed traveling expenses. Oh, you... you fools! Everything that happens around here, you blame it on Lige. I know he wasn't in town last night. Yeah, well, I know he was. I've seen him heading for the hills. But, oh, Miss Molly, you know that isn't true. Of course it isn't true. They're just trying to pin something on Lige again. Hey, who's this fresh kid here? Speak up, young fellow. What are you sticking your nose in this for? Because I can prove that Lige Thomas wasn't anywhere near this town last night. Yeah? How can you prove that? Because he was with me and my friends, miles away from here. You're telling a lie when you say you saw him riding away from town. Boy, you little squirt out of box your ears for talking to me like that. You hadn't better try it. And you'd better stop telling lies about Lige Thomas, too. Why, well, you... Here, let me get my hands on you. Slippery upstart. Just wait till I get a hold of you. I'll teach you some manners. Run, Dan. Don't let him catch you. Why, well, you... Back this, Molly. With a lone ranger. Come on, Victor. Get a boy. I'd sure like to get my hands on that fresh kid. You'll never catch him now, Bat Gillis. Well, I almost had him there, but he... Hey, what was that he said about the lone ranger? The lone ranger is his friend. Yes, and Lige's friend, too. <laughs> What's wrong, boss? Listen, everything's wrong. Come on, we gotta catch that kid before he gets to the Lone Ranger. Yeah, that's what I said. You know what that means to us. Now, come on, let's get that kid. A desperate fear clutched the heart of Bat Gillis when he learned that his attempted at frame up had gone wrong. Caught in the lie by young Dan Reed. Gillis knew that his only chance of escaping the Lone Ranger's wrath was in stopping Dan. Furiously, Gillis and his men followed Dan's trail to the foothills. Well, there ain't no chance of catching that kid now. That white horse is too fast. Hey, Pat, look at here. This is where they made their camp. Gillis, come here, quick. Come on, boy, get up there. Come on. What do you got there? It's a note. Dressed to the kid from the Lone Ranger. Hey, let me see that. Hey, listen. It says, Dan, we'll be waiting for you at the deserted cabin near the creek. And it's signed by the Lone Ranger. All right, now listen, you hombres. Here's our chance to get rid of that pesky kid and the Lone Ranger at the same time. I know where that cabin is. We'll catch him in there and fix him good and proper for keeps. Now, come on. Here's where we knock off the Lone Ranger. The dream of every outlaw to trap the Lone Ranger and his companions. Riding at a furious pace, Bat Gillis and his cronies raced toward the abandoned cabin. Right up here. Oh, 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 oh. All right, everybody. Spread out and surround the place. See James straight when you start shooting. We want both the Lone Ranger and that kid. Don't give him a chance to sneak out the back way. Don't worry, Gillis. That Lone Ranger's been on my trail for too long. All I want is one shot at that fella. Yeah. Don't forget he's probably got that engine with him. We gotta get him, too. Spread out there. Get that cabin surrounded and shoot the daylights out of the place. It's a darn lucky thing for me that kid tipped his hand. Didn't even know the Lone Ranger was in these parts. He might have spoiled everything. He might yet, Gillis. Wait, but grab him, Toto. Um, he got him. Here. Here, you take guns. Drag him over here behind these bushes. Oh, the blazes. 
I thought you yes, were... Yes, you thought we were in that cabin, I know. But as it turns out, the rat gets caught in his own trap. But that note... That note was written for your benefit. Clyde, you and Hutto, keep an eye on those men over by the cabin. I sure will do that, sir. Men lay like snakes in grass. Wait for us to come out. Now, Gillis, you and I are going to change clothes. What are you fixing to do? Here, we'll change hats. I have another mask in my pocket you can wear. What are you driving at? Why, you promised your men a chance at the Lone Ranger. You're not going to disappoint them, are you? You mean I can't... Yes, put on this hat and mask, Gillis. I'm very anxious to see how your men will receive you when you walk out of here. No, no, I won't do it. You can't make me. Come on, Otto. Uh, All right. We just push him over there in plain sight. But you and Lige better take cover in a hurry when they spot him. The bullets will fly thick and fast. Oh, wait. Don't make me go out there. They'll kill me on sight. Yes, yes, I know. Come on, Toto. Lige, let's shove this rat out on the firing line. No, no, wait. Perhaps you'd like to talk a little first. You might like to explain why you were so anxious to frame Lige Thomas for killing Carl Brader. Don't push me out there. I'll talk. Listen, somebody coming up at the trail fast. Yes, that should be Dan with the sheriff's posse. That kid, we thought... Dan rode only as far as our camp, where I left that note for you to find. Dan cut across country and rode back to town for the sheriff. Hey, that's the sheriff. Let's get out of here. I got you, boys. Come on. Back up in the cavity. Some of Gillis's men, Sheriff. Go get him, boys. Don't let him get away. Now, Gillis, you'd better talk and talk fast. What? You got the wrong man. Peek up your pole cap before I turn Lige loose in your yellow hide. How long were you taking orders from Carl Brader? I, ever since Lige went to jail. Brader, he made me hold up that stage and get the payroll. And you planted the evidence and convicted Lige. Yeah, I had to do it. Why did you kill Brader? My hands, I tell you. It was either him or me. He was trying to get me out of the way when the Thomas kid came back from jail, so as I wouldn't spill anything. And then when Lodge came back to town and had an argument with Brader, you saw a good chance to kill Brader and make it look as though Lodge had done it. Yes, that's right. One more thing, Gillis. You said you saw Lodge riding away from the bank last night. Well, I, I just made that up when I heard the bank had been busted into. Oh, and likely you broke in yourself. No, Gillis had no part in that. Whether you did or not, Gillis, I sure ain't got words enough to tell you what a low-down farmer you are. Hey, Lodge. Yes, Sheriff. I reckon it's going to take the folks in this town a mighty long while to make up for the way you've been treated on account of this sneaking crook. I, well, I guess I'd better get back to town. Molly will be glad to know that everything's straightened out at last. Just a minute, Lige. You're forgetting your bargain. What bargain are you talking about? Remember last night in my camp? You said you wanted to join up with me? Sure, but I thought... You thought I was an outlaw, and you promised to take orders from me. Remember? Sure. Now I do mean it. Mister, I'd do anything in the world for you. All right. And I want you to come with Tonto and me. The sheriff. Uh-huh. Take your prisoner into town. Then get Dan and the girl and meet us at the Flying W. Uh-huh. And uh, you might even take time to put the bullet. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say, that's a right good idea, Mass Man. Sure, you bet I'll do it. I'd like to know what we're riding over here for. Well, your country, isn't it, Lyle? Of course it is. It's the Flying W Ranch. I was born and raised on this place. But that's so... Oh, Silver, oh, boy. Who's got hope on home? Look, I just come from town. It's the sheriff and Dan. Yeah. Who's that riding with him? Hey, but that looks like Molly on the black horse. Get up, get up, boy. Get up. Uh, uh, uh. Boy and girl be plenty happy now, eh? You must have any? Yes, Tonto. After all the faith those two have placed in the outcome of justice, I'd say they're entitled to a great deal of happiness. Oh, hold steady. Oh, oh, oh. Molly. Lodge. The sheriff told me all about it. Oh, Lige, it's the most wonderful thing that ever happened. Well, honey, it wouldn't have been possible if the Lone Ranger hadn't gone after that crook Gillis. Hey, Mass Man, I brought that fellow you told me to get. <laughs> hey, this is Judge Brady. Judge? I want you to meet the Lone Ranger. Oh, How are you, Judge? Well, I'm right glad to know you. Well, come on. Let's get over the hanging. Uh, first, Sheriff, I have a confession to make. Who's it? I'm the man who broke into the bank last night. You yeah. did? Oh, well, I'll be jiggered. Why? When Lodge came to my camp and found out who I was, he told me the whole story of his life. Mm-hmm. Well, Lodge sure got a raw deal, but we'll make it up to him some way. Lodge told me how his dad died here on the Flying W. While he was in prison. Yep. The bank foreclosed old man Thomas's mortgage right after he died and sold the place to Bat Gillis. No, Sheriff. Carl Brader gave the place to Gillis. Yeah. In payment for his crooked work and to help him put up a big front 
as a respectable rancher. Which is? Yes, Gillis and Brady worked together for years. It sure beats all how them two had everybody fooled. No, not everybody, Judge. From the story that Lyons told me, I knew that his father was a hard-working man and not inclined to let his debts go unpaid. You're right there, Mass Man. Lige's dad was on the level. As far as that mortgage on the Flying W was concerned, that was a fake. What do you mean? Mr. Thomas did sign a mortgage at the bank for $10,000. Here's the mortgage, which I found in Carl Brader's private office. And here are the receipts showing that Mr. Thomas paid the note in full before he died. Why... Then that means that neither Carl Brader nor Bat Gillis ever did own the Flying W. Not legally, anyway. You're right, Judge. The legal owner is Lige Thomas here. Here, you better take care of these papers for him. Oh, them. <laughs> you better will. So that's why you got us all out here on the Flying W. Golly, I, I can't believe it's true. It's all yours, Lige. I hope you'll both be very happy here for a long time to come. Let's go, Dan. Come on, Tonto. Goodbye, Lige. Molly, good luck. Adios. Adios. Hey, you fellas can't leave now. We're just about to start the hanging. Goodbye, Sheriff. You can be the witness. Hey, what is this? What do you got to witness? Who's going to get hung? <coughs> Harsh, young feller. I think you are. Yeah, you see, lads, uh, Lone Ranger and his friends just sort of give you back your flying W ranches, eh? But, uh, well, sort of a wedding present, you might say. Yeah, but... Now, just that... leave it up to Molly here. Who in the name of Tunk had ever heard of getting a wedding present before you get married? What do you mean? Sure. You just got his book already. Molly, I... Uh, th- that is, w- will you... Sure she will, you young idiot. Come on, Judge. Let's get the agony over with. Oh, my. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>